Hi everyone, it's Jamie. It's 2016. This is my first video of the year. And I'm responding to an email I got uh, regarding my bird baths. So what I do, thought I would do is I'm not actually going to make a bird bath today, but I'm going to just dissect one and then, because um, I show some of the elements in other videos, so I don't want to repeat myself. Anyway, here's an example of a smaller bird bath. This is a little bit taller, and then in a second I'm going to show you an even bigger one. So the, the way that I construct these are all the same, um, regardless of size. So you can see those elements and then build up or scale down, whichever you want to do. The first thing I do is I start off with the cone. So I'm going to create a slab on a cone, and I have a video for that, um, decorated. And then I'm going to um, sometimes apply a bottom, and then most definitely apply a little top here. So. Um, the way that I do this depends on the actual piece of the bird bath that's going to go on top. So in this example, I used a mold over a throwing bat, and I'll show you that in a second. And then I added another form on the back to kind of hold the top here. So I had to make sure that um, this top part could fit inside of here. Now for a permanent installation, I'm going to do a cold finish. I'm going to epoxy this piece onto this piece. So this is one example of um, something put on the outside to help hold it on top. Another example is this other one here. Now this is a little bit different. This I did not put anything on the bottom. You can see right through. Um, but I did epoxy it onto the plate after it was fired. Now um, for this one I didn't put the same kind of fitting I did on the other. This one I just put these little peas um, to mark where this base would go. So the peas uh, served two functions. They helped keep it this um, in line to know where that goes. And then also when I'm firing, this kept it off of the shelf. So um, a recommendation when you're going to start out doing something uh, more architectural with your ceramics you want to use a clay that has a lot of grog in it. So this one um, was able to keep its form in the kiln and didn't go flop. Um, like, you know, if you had a clay that didn't have a lot of grog in it. Anyway, so the pea uh, would keep it off of the kiln shelf when I did my firing. So that's my two little bird baths. My third one is a little bit big to show you in one piece, so I'm going to have to show you in segments. Um, this is a bigger cone, and the base is thrown on it with a coil, and then that coil comes around, wraps around here with a design of leaves coming up. Up here at the top, um, so this is part is hand-built, this is thrown. This piece right here, I don't know if you can see that or not, this piece right here is thrown, and this is a hand-built uh, piece of coil um, that goes around this to help fit into here better. This piece up here is a slab put on the same mold that I used for the top. So I'm going to put that down here for a second. Here is the top to that piece. So I'm going to turn it over. Um, this was on a mold, a plaster mold, that I did. And then um, while it was on the mold, I put a coil around it and I threw it on. So um, I did a process of attaching uh, a foot to a molded piece, a mold piece. Um, and then, of course, with this design, I followed the same design I had coming up the bird bath onto the back. And then it kind of comes off the plate and into the base. I have a little labyrinth for my birds <laughs> um, so they can enjoy pondering the meaning of life as they're enjoying the flying about. Anyway, um, so that's my inside design. So this sits on top of that other piece. Now the thing here is I use the same mold for here as for, oh, this heavy, the base of this. So, I'm 
that fits in there. And so in this, in a permanent installation, I would also epoxy in um, the glue. Um, and so to, to get that, that perfect fit, I used a tool like this that would help me determine you know, the size. So I threw this first, and then I determined the size of this inside you know, after I measured here and determined how big it should be. One last thing I want to show you before I put this big one away is that in this one I put a hole in it and the idea of putting the hole in it well number one it was gonna it was it can't be a closed form you know when it's drying you need to have a hole in there otherwise you'll get things will crack um, the other thing is that I thought that in a permanent installation I would fill it with sand and so this hole gave me the means to, you know, put sand in there to make the bottom a little bit more heavy. Although it is pretty heavy on its own. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, if you're planning on scaling, is um, the thickness. So this is... Um, a little bit thicker than let's say these guys here this I might have started out with three-eighths of an inch whereas these are quarter inch top and bottom that base on the the stand I just showed you that's a half an inch at least if not uh, five-eighths so the bigger you go the thicker your slabs need to be all right so let's talk about cones for a minute um, there's a variety of cones that you can find at the craft stores and um, for this one this one I use this cone here this is a Doris cone um, and this one here I used a um, styrofoam cone, um, cone so I have a video about showing um, you know joining slabs on a cone and so you can look at that one to see you know how to go about doing that um, if you're going to scale up, this is your next step, <laughs> is you want to get a traffic cone. So this is a kind of a smallish one, and then I have this size, and that's what I did for my big one. Alright, the final thing that I wanted to show you was um, just you know creating these plates. So here I have a bat, um, and I do not have the size handy. It is, this is like a ten and a half inch bat. That doesn't seem standard. Anyway, um, and this mold I created from a dinner plate from, you know, like picnic wear, plastic picnic wear. I found a really nice deep one. So I centered the mold on the bat, and then I just laid the clay on top with my designs. So this is actually the mold I used for this one. Um, so you can see what the shrinkage is, it's quite a bit. I'll give you a trick for finding out how to center the mold on the bat. One of the things that I like to do is I push the mold all the way over to the end and then I measure at the widest part and this is three inches. So what that means is that for this to be centered the space around here is all going to be um, an inch and a half. So if I measure inch and a half and I push the mold up to the edge of that inch and a half then I go to a quarter ways down and I go inch and a half. Then that should be centered on the on the board. And I just like to go around to make sure that it's all the way around there, that I didn't move anything. And then I would, you know, lie lay my slab of clay over and then use the border to just to simply cut around like this and then I would let it set up. 
Um, at, while it's setting up, you have the option of putting on the little pea balls, or you can put in the other form that I have on this one. So the other form um, is just a slab laid over this. So I put a slab over this, and then when it firms up, I put it on top of here. And then I take my cutters and I, um, you know, cut out. And I make sure whatever I cut out um, is going to be um, a little bit... Um, actually, you can use the cutout from here to attach to the base here and maybe shave it down a little bit. Like, we'll go down one cutter size. I don't like to have it that clo close of a fit when I'm doing this. Anyway, um, this is a simple mold that I made from the bottom of a plate or a bowl. So you can get the little plastic, um, not plastic, um, styrofoam um, in the picnic section of the grocery store. You fill that up with plaster and then you, it pops out easily. Um, and then that's what you have here. Um, you could also use, um, you know, this is a chinette plate. So you could also slump clay into here and um, then put the hole in it and then put it on there. So there's lots of options here. Um, I guess that's it. I hope that answers the questions for the people who were inquiring <laughs> about how to put together the bird bath. Um, if you have any further questions, just ask me on the webpage link or the um, YouTube link and I'll get back to you. Thanks. See you next time.